If you're a private hire operator in the UK, you could say the amount of vehicles in the market to choose from is plentiful. Well, here's another one to look at, the DS7. A few years ago, DS Automobiles, or in plain English, the premium arm of Peugeot Citroen Group, announced it was going to take on the likes of Audi and BMW with the DS7 Crossback, which will focus on increased comfort and semi-autonomous driving technology. As soon as it was launched, President Macron had one as his presidential vehicle, which certainly sung its praises from the outset. So, how would the DS7 perform within the UK's chauffeur or private hire industry? So how's a passenger going to feel when they jump into the back of the DS7? Well, they're certainly not going to be disappointed. It's quite a pleasant place to be. Really funky seat design there, you know, which makes it stand out a little bit from its, uh, from its competitors. Certainly loads of legroom. There's the front passenger seats quite the way forward, but still enough to sit someone in it. So there's plenty of legroom. Quite a bit of headroom, a nice panoramic roof just to give the cabin a bit more light and air. Little armrest here with a couple of um, reasonable size cup holders two USB points, there's no rear air conditioning controls in the back here, which um, would be nice, wouldn't it, just to have a bit of control over the air. Generally, they're not going to be disappointed. Well thought out exterior features make the DS7 stand out from the rest, whilst modern, almost fashionable interior design make it a great place to be. In the boot, drivers won't be disappointed with the available space. So the manufacturers say the DS7 has 555 litres of boot space, which isn't actually that bad when you look at some of the popular private hire and chauffeur vehicles in the market. It doesn't actually look like 500 litres, but I'll take their word for it. So you've got this uh, divider here, which is quite good, because you can then lift it up, pull it on another level, so you've got a nice flat surface to get the cases in. Or if you just want that extra bit of space, you can drop it quite conveniently down into there, giving you a little lip there, so you get a bit more space. Um, I'd, I'd be nice to get this parcel shelf out of the way. Not quite sure where you can store this, to be honest. It looks as if it should just slide in and store somewhere, but I can't seem to make it fit anywhere. So, we'll get rid of that. But there's uh, plenty of storage as well for the uh, all the bits and bobs, all your, uh, all your rags and your polishes and anything like that. A couple of pockets there. So yeah, a nice usable space. Under the bonnet is a two-litre inline four-cylinder diesel engine, and although it won't set the world alight, it's punchy when you need it. Delivering 180 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque, there's little to grumble about. The list of standard safety equipment and driving technologies are extensive, and certainly comparable to some of the German rivals it was created to compete against. The DS7 is an enjoyable and exciting car to be in and is a great move from some of the other vehicles in the sector. However, operators on a budget may have to do some careful calculations to make this work successfully as a private hire vehicle. So the DS7 range is certainly worth considering. It's a nice, roomy, practical and economical car to drive and it's also great to look at. The DS7 range does start from around £26,000, but this one has a particular problem. It's fully loaded with almost every option on it, and it costs £46,000. 